moving to oneness. Nourishing curiosity. Embracing differences. Becoming one. Normally, I have no problem starting the podcast. And I've started it now with several topics. Soccer, snow, change. <laughs> and now I think really touched me. So let's see what's going to arise now. <laughs> I'm curious. You know, normally I sit down, start a topic. Whatever comes out of my mouth, that's the topic. I don't think often about what I want to speak about. Because I like to be in the presence, in the moment. To be fully there for you, my listener, of the Moving to Wonders podcast. Hello, I'm Maeline Elke, your host. So let's see where it goes today. As I'm speaking, I'm looking at a beautiful flower. It's a white flower, just opened up. I'm thinking about the name Christ Rose. I think it's a winter rose. It's called in English. I once knew it. I forgot. Sorry. But it's one of the few flowers that bloom in the winter, right after the frost or when the snow melts away. And its whiteness and how it shines and glows talks to me. There's a certain purity about it. Its form and it has these five petals and inside like little starburst of, yeah, starburst of yellowish white. Again, don't remember what the name was. I've been a landscape architect. I am one. <laughs> and you know, the funny thing is I can't remember a word. I can't remember it in German or in English. There is no difference. If it's out of my head, it's out of my head. But it, it's like stars. And this is so interesting. The stars outside are really clear, crisp, You can see the light much better than usually. So that means the air is more crisp. Energies on our Earth are changing, right? The world is not so dense anymore. I could notice it with the snow. Just the last few days I've been taking my broom and brushing away the snow from the ground so we have a clear path and no ice can develop. And even after five days now, It's light, it's powdery, it's fluffy. And many, many thousand beautiful tiny crystals make up the snow. Yes, we had some cold nights and last night was the coldest night here in my region of the year. After a beautiful warm year, there's no weight to it. And I think it is symbolizing also our times now, this lightness. And you may feel that lightness within you, within yourself. Or you notice that there are more and more light moments. And that you have the pure thought coming through more and more. You may think about something and it appears. You think about someone and they appear. I'm just going to use, I was in the movie theater two days ago watching the new uh, movie Avatar. And on the way there, I thought, oh, maybe I see a friend of mine. And then the thought was gone. And what happens? <laughs> in the same row next to me, there was just a path in between. He sits down. It's amazing. The clarity that we're all getting now. And please, don't brush these things aside. So this is one example Or you may notice that you're thinking something that someone is going to say and they say it. So observe how more in tune you're in with yourself, how more in tune you are with everything existing outside. And also that you're getting more in tune. So invite what you thought wouldn't be possible. So you can become even more in tune right? 
the sensation of what a person thinks or goes through, what a plant thinks or goes through, right? I'm going to use this plant again that I'm looking at. Christrose. I got it as a present. And just a day later, I thought, oh, it needs water. And it took a few hours until I really did give it then some water. And right away, it popped open and even a flower that was already hanging down and you thought, oh, I can cut it off the next moment. Cut back its strength, stood upright and is opening up. A little wrinkled on the outside. But still found its strength, found its nourishment, found its water to be upright. Oh, look, there's the water. Do drink a lot. So the water is in the snow. Very pure, beautiful water. And water is a present to all of us from our cosmos, right? In his book, Amoto wrote about it, that it came later onto this earth to support us. It's our life force. Even in the movie, it's so about the water and the animals that live in the water. And we are land people. Do we cherish the water enough? Our lakes, our rivers, the water that's coming out of the faucet that we use as housewomen every single day to do our chores. But it also cooks our food. It provides nourishment for our body, our cells, to get full. So are you drinking enough water to fill up every cell in your body so it can be and move again in its optimal state and have a certain presence, the certain kick to it, <laughs> the certain kick to you. What happens then to you? Also your bones, your muscles, your tendons, your fascia, everything stands up and you will walk more straight. Look, I'm talking about it. <laughs> you can't see me, but I'm moving more straight away from the a microphone sitting upright. Yeah, think about it and boom, it happens. So cherish the water, give it your love and it feeds you. You can code with beauty, with beautiful messages, the water. We've learned that and it's fascinating. You can't do the opposite. <laughs> it doesn't carry meanness and it's life-giving. Even under the ice, it's always four degrees and there's always something living. You can even survive under the snow, right? Everyone who has lived in the mountains knows how to create bivouac so you can breathe. An avalanche comes down or you're cold, you cover yourself up. It creates a blanket. It provides warmth. It's a, the movie Tinkerbell is coming into my head, right? There's one where they show that the fairies put a little ice around it and then before the snow comes or so there is a safety net in a way around it so water is a safety net between the ways of transforming as it transforms it's also a beautiful sign of how transformation happens you can see it in front of your eyes and it makes beautiful sounds oh i just saw a What's it, Gary? He loves to photograph the fairies in, in New Zealand and records the sound. And just recently he showed a video where he went to a spring to record the sound of water. He put the microphone into the water. Sounds beautiful. But also children love to play in it, right? They go into a bathtub and hit on it, move, go in and out with their hands Right, Because all the water that then drips from their hands creates sound or they go under with their head to listen to the sound of water. If you think about the snow today, the children were all outside taking their sleds. And when I went for a walk today under my feet, it was cracking, bristled, creating a beautiful sound. The rain creates a sound. And the snow that the snowflakes that come down, calm, quiet sound. It's like this calmness they bring, this silence, not a silencing, but a quietness. 
where you inside become quiet, your pulse goes down, your breathing gets slower. Even if you're outside in the for a walk, it was cold and <laughs> really cold today, right? And you can feel it on your skin, so that means the blood in your body goes a little slower and then boom, it has to move a little faster to warm you up again. So that is this dance of speed, of a changing rhythm. And then when the snow which had covered the trees for now a few days is slowly disappearing. But is it disappearing? Visually, we won't see it anymore. Or I'm not going to see it. But it goes into droplets. Or it goes into condensation, into the sky to create new clouds and come down as rain. But what does it do? It takes memory along. It has an exchange with those trees. And it will go somewhere else and it's a communication tool. It comes out. I remember in a spring up in uh, the Alps. I lived for a long time in Switzerland. And if it comes to a certain lake, I think it has gone 60 times through a water system, maybe 60 bodies. So it reads us and gives us information. Think about that and even take and ask the water that you drink. What information does it have for you? How can it support you? If you're in the bathtub, in the shower, ask the water to support you in bringing more out what is to come out. It's an ally. You're moving more and more into your being, your optimal state. There's no turning back or, yeah, maybe you can take a few steps back. But then there comes a push that push you forward or catapults you forward. So you start to live your purpose. And all of you who are listening, you're all here to create change. Bring your beautiful way of being to forward humanity and this planet in healing, in recognizing itself losing its scars or transforming the scars in the landscape, the scars in social structures, the scars on our human body, the traumatic ones or the physical ones. You're bringing more energy and light, your beautiful light and the warmth of the light and energy vibration, however you want to call it. It's, it's anyway all coming together and you're making people aware as you become aware as you are popping up more straight more confident not crunched over or tightened right you expand your shoulders fall back your head rises your eyes look forward and not to the ground anymore an inspiration for everyone else you provide an opportunity for others to synchronize with you. This is so beautiful. Take a deep breath. And the air that you pull in, play with it. Communicate with the air. A breath is not just a tool to survive. You know, your knowledge is out there. You're materialized now. So you know you can live without. <laughs> but take in that breath. And send out that breath with love, that whatever it touches the air provides an unraveling for whatever it touches. Isn't this beautiful if we talk and see this connectiveness? And there's a urge, right, of coming together, of recognizing each other, of understanding each other. And as I said before, I was thinking about the world soccer game that is happening as I'm recording this now. Argentina versus France, right? In that in Qatar. And people from all around the world coming together to play. And yeah, you can be for soccer or against soccer. It doesn't matter. But go into that energy of the interest of people coming together, of understanding each other. In a way of playing with each other, exchanging their culture, 
this movability that is happening again. After having been alone, most of the people, they find people, or a community. It's a topic many can feel free about and can speak about it. Maybe they, you watch television or listen to the radio or a computer nowadays. You watch the game on the computer, right? But then you can go out and you have something to converse with. And it's like an invitation. Also think about it. It provides for many people a new landscape. It's not a European landscape. It's not a South American landscape. It's the sand. Really interesting. It's drier than here in Germany today. <laughs> We have the opposite. We have the extra layer of water of snow. But people soak up the energy of that sand. What is it? Is it old ocean? Old shells? Or is it out of rock? Probably it's a mix in some areas. Other areas it's rock. And those old rocks, were they once upon a time underwater or not? Corals? It's really fascinating. Where I'm here now, there was once underwater. And corals and the rocks that are outside that shine, you can see Still, the corals, millions of years old. And this connectiveness, I think this is what we're looking for. Looking for similarities, finding a, a topics we can speak about that feed our soul or nourish ourselves. And that we can recognize ourselves in others. So I'm going to take even here now a sip of water. I have a glass of water. Standing next to me, holding it in my hand, seeing the water move in the glass, shaking it a little bit, or shaking, swirling it a little bit. All right? Oh, that's anyway a good idea. Swirl your water. Some people put two bottles on top of each other and let it swirl through to energize it. So how can you energize the water? Speak to it. Ask it questions. It reminds me, I was also watching documentary movies about Qatar, Saudi Arabia, the Emirates, and also about Africa, some of the Sahara regions, countries that are in the Sahara region. And how they're losing the water. And why are they losing water? They're losing trees, their own plants, and You know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, we Europeans went over and tried to teach them our way of planting, as we do here, but it doesn't work there. And there was a beautiful movie how one man was able to change a lot of things because he helped remember how they cut their own trees, trim them, not cu cutting them off, so that they can replenish, grow, And then create a new ecosystem. And when they have the ecosystem, then, you know, some insects can grow, fruits can grow, they fall to the ground, they create topsoil, and the list goes on and on. So he f helped many trees to grow. I mean, millions, 40 million trees. <laughs> But also going through understanding what works, what doesn't work, by educating others. And I thought, if you have no water, humanity loses so much. Uh, families were torn apart because the men had to leave to make some money because in the waterless areas you can't grow things. So then you have to educate and show people to save the trees and not cut them down or burn them down because then they make coal I have to say, it's really sad to see that and it goes to the Arabian countries or to Europe and we use it for barbecuing. Maybe it goes to other countries as well. And I said, oh my God. So they take whatever wood they can find, cut down trees to burn it and then to sell it to other continents where they need it so much. What can we do? What can you do? What can I do? That really came to my head. Um, For sure, plant trees. I talk about that every single time. But we have to see how do we get things to grow. And there are regions where they had big areas 
but you can't let people or animals in for a few years. So it can revitalize, so the earth can revitalize. And on that little hill, and it's a big hill, what happened after a decade? There was no water, but suddenly, because there was growth, springs appeared, 13 springs. That's a lot. So where in your country, in my country, can we plant so the water comes to the surface again? So we can see it, we can touch it. I think that is the important point, right? Even here we don't, here in Germany, we don't have many springs. Uh, the power of the spring, of uh, the quality of the water that comes out of it. It's very high vibrating. Here in Bavaria, the churches put their church on it. So the people couldn't get to the spring. Normally springs were open and you could do the celebrations or rituals were done at springs and yeah we lost our springs too everything was straightened we we have too many channels our planting goes down yeah so i'm thinking a lot what i personally can do that's another topic for another podcast but what can i do what can you do what can we do uh, to bring water back to the surface because it is here for you. It's here for me. It's here for us. And I want to cherish, respect it fully. Like I love and respect, cherish you. Or the flower right in front of me. Let's bring a song for the beautiful relationship we have with water. <laughs> a few songs and I can remember when it's about what it has this popping tones it's still here droplets and even the silence in between the tones is like the snow outside ah it makes me happy right away singing the sound of water or with with water the water singing through me (laughs) wow there's a happiness i don't know do you feel it as well brain and it's like i'm creative i'm thinking oh my god where were all the other songs that i sang with the water on the radio show that i had for seven years or here now the podcast and bring them together to like (laughs) water a cd or a mix of those water sounds huh that would be fun invigorating it's invigorating let me know i would really love to hear if you changed i uh, felt the change uh, by hearing these tones these sounds uh, celebrating water celebrating a relationship with water going into communication co-creating this is what is important how we can bring it up how can you be more sensitive in tune listen to the water what does it tell you what to create 
for the world, for yourself, for humanity, right? There's this play together from the single drop, the whole ocean, right? This combination, it is life-giving. So give life to yourself. What a beautiful ending for this show. Have a wonderful day or evening, wherever you are. I'm Mylene, the host of the Moving to Oneness podcast. And I send you off with... <laughs> Goodbye.